Hi everyone, uh, my name is Derek Wang. I'm a rising senior at Carnegie Mellon University studying biology and computer science, and I'm a summer trainee in the Mayan lab at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. And today I'll be presenting on a software application that I developed this summer called Cell Shooter, which serves as an interactive viewer and analysis tool for tumor profiling data from single cells or patient cohorts. So first, this is a brief overview of the website. The user starts with uploading their own single cell RNA-seq data, or they could also choose from a couple preloaded data sets where one of them will be the main focus of my presentation. And then the raw data undergoes clustering and dimensionality reduction to be able to be visualized, and then the user can select clusters based on their chosen parameters. The selected clusters can then be passed to several downstream analyses, which I'll describe more later. Um, so first I'll talk about the data set that I processed and analyzed with my website. So this comes from the Clinical Proteomic Tumor Analysis Consortium. So CPTAC analyzes proteomic and genomic profiling data in an initiative to better understand the molecular basis of cancers. So the data set used in Cell Shooter is from phase three of CPTAC, and it's an RNA-seq data set of tissue samples from 1,083 patients and 10 cancer types. And both tumor samples and adjacent or normal samples were taken from the patients. Other metadata were also recorded, including the immune cell type associated with each sample. And with these data and metadata, we can use Cell Shooter to find small molecules or drugs that can potentially alter gene expression signatures of a selected cluster of samples to be more like those of another cluster of samples. So for example, we can push tumor samples to be more like adjacent samples, or push cold tumor samples to be more like hot tumor samples. And tumors can be characterized as hot or cold based on the suppression of the immune response. So cold tumors suppress the immune response and hot tumors likely trigger a strong immune response, such as the infiltration of CD8 T cells and the presence of the interferon gamma cytokine. So this is where the immune cell type metadata is useful. So the cold phenotype is CD8 minus IFNG minus and the hot phenotype is CD8 plus IFNG plus. So after selecting clusters of samples, we can compute gene expression signatures using differential gene expression and compare them to already known gene expression signatures. So the Lynx L1000 dataset is a resource that facilitates this, and it's a part of the Lynx project, which is an NIH Common Fund program. So this dataset profiles the molecular and phenotypical outcomes of human cell lines after perturbations. So they were able to generate millions of gene expression profiles using thousands of perturbations, including small molecules or drugs, gene knockdowns, and gene overexpression. This enables us to find potential small molecules and drugs by performing gene signature similarity searches against this L1000 dataset. There are a few tools that are developed and currently maintained by the Mayan lab that can do this, such as L1000 CDS2, L1000 Fireworks Display, and SIGCOM links. And in particular, SIGCOM links is used in Cell Shooter to query up and down gene sets against the L1000 dataset. So now I can show a live demo of the website. So when you first visit the website, this is what the homepage looks like. And we'll be looking at this first preloaded data set from CPTAC3 as an example. And first, we can load in the data for a specific cohort from one cancer type. And we can use CCRCC, which is a type of kidney cancer, as an example. So this is the screen once that data is loaded in. And by default, the samples are shaped by immune cell type and colored by whether the sample is from a tumor or the adjacent tissue. And so once you identify the two groups that you want to compare, you can click on one member from each cluster to select the two groups. So the table here shows the selected um, clusters. So the source cluster is the tumor samples and the target cluster is the adjacent samples. And the arrow is a visual indication that the analysis will compute a signature that compares the source cluster to the target cluster. And in this way, the differentially expressed genes will be the up or down regulated genes in the target cluster compared with the source cluster. And we can then click on a couple buttons to actually perform the differential gene expression analysis and submit the up and down gene sets to SIGCOM links and Enricher. And instead of waiting for it to compute, I can just show the results here. So the results are a ranking of the top reversers and mimickers, which are the small molecules and drugs that may be used to push the cells um, from one expression state to another. So specifically, the mimickers may push the tumor cluster to be more like the adjacent tissue cluster, or in other words, mimic the computed gene signature. 
And for the enricher results, the top upregulated and downregulated gene ontology biological processes are displayed. So now if we go back to the slides. I then perform the same analysis for each cancer type, uh, pushing tumors toward their adjacent. And these are the top candidates for each cancer type. So one interesting result is this top mimicker for LSCC lung cancer, which is nicotine. So nicotine is a known substance that makes smoking addictive, which is linked to lung cancer. So at first, we thought that we might have reversed the inputs, the up and down genes, um, but we carefully checked and that was not the case. So we reasoned that the adjacent normal samples may have been also exposed to nicotine. So it's possible that the effects of nicotine are still present in the adjacent normal, um, but less in the tumors. So in other words, the adjacent normal samples are not 100% normal. And it's known that tumors lose their ability to respond to extracellular signals. So such cells no longer have a nicotine gene expression signal. So the fact that we have nicotine as the top candidate is a good sign that the method does not produce random candidates. And now we can go back to the live demo here. So the other analysis that we can do with cell shooter is selecting the cold versus hot tumors. So in this example, we can load in the pan cancer data. And now the metadata fields are modified. So um, we are looking at the immune cell types. And we're interested in finding drugs that may push the cold tumors to become hot. And the results should produce a ranking of potential pan cancer drugs to achieve this. So based on the color legend, the blue points are the cold tumor samples. And the green points are the hot tumor samples. And we can click on the submit buttons again. And then I can just show the results here. So these are the results that I obtained from SIGCOM links. And so one of the top candidates to turn cold tumors to hot is the small BIX01294. So BIX01294 is a known inhibitor of cell proliferation and an inducer of apoptosis in various human cancer cell lines. So this preclinical drug candidate could be further tested as a drug that turns cold tumors to hot. And again, these are the top processes in the hot tumors identified by Enricher. So the upregulated processes identify the increased activity of an immune response and the potential presence of immune cell types with processes like cytokine-mediated and interferon-gamma-mediated signaling pathways. Now if we go back to the slides again. So in summary, Cell Shooter facilitates users to explore the CPTAC data in, in a unique way, including developing hypotheses about potential mechanisms of action and preclinical small molecules. And another feature of the site is also to select a single cluster of samples. And rather than performing differential gene expression, the user can pass the RNA-seq data of these samples to identify overexpressed gene targets using the Tumor Gene Target Screener Apiter. And in the future, we can also implement additional features, such as allowing the user to choose the algorithm used for differential gene expression a file input feature for users to visualize and analyze their own RNA-seq data, and support for the proteomics data from CPTAC as well. So I'd like to thank Dr. Mayan and Sherry Jenkins for organizing and providing a valuable experience at this internship. And I'd like to give a big thanks to my mentors, Daniel and Errol, for helping me with various issues along the way. And Daniel also provided me the foundation of code to visualize data. And last but not least, thank you to all the members of this lab and all my fellow interns. Thanks for listening.